Hey everyone, today we're going to be writing tests for a React component using Jest and the React testing library. So to get started, I'm going to use MPX to create my React app, but you can create your React app however you want. If you already have a React app, that will also work. Now that that's finished, we're going to move into that directory and we're going to open it in our code editor. So I'm just going to open up the terminal here and I'm going to use npm start. This is going to open our app in the browser and I'm just going to put this over to the right and I'm going to keep my code editor on the left so we can work on these at the same time. So this gives us the basic project of a React app and we can see it's running here. So the first thing we're going to do is create our component. We're going to put it inside a new directory called components and we're going to name this file todo.js. As you can guess, this component is going to re render a to-do item for like a to-do list or something like that. So the first thing we need to do is import React from React. And then we're going to create our function. And for now, let's just return a div that says hello world. Like that. And then we need to do export default to do. So that's our basic component to begin with. It's going to become more complex um, as we write some tests. But for now, let's go into app.js and let's use this component. So we're going to remove everything inside the div. And we're able to remove this line because we don't use logo anymore. And then we're going to import to do from and it's inside the components directory to do. And then we're able to use that component here, like that. So once we save, it hot reloaded, and we can see we have, we're now rendering this component. So now that we have this basic component, we want to write a test for that. So inside the components directory, we're going to create a new folder. And I just like to use this convention where, um, you create a directory with tests in this format and Jest is going to be able to pick up that it's a test because if we create a new file we can call this todo.test.js and Jest picks up files with this regex using .test. Um, so we're going to be able to write our test in here. Just to show that this is actually running a test we can create a test here And if we do expect true dot to be true, uh, we'll be able to run our tests. So we do get a simple test for free with React, with Create React App, but we're actually going to delete this. We're going to be doing something similar, but we're going to be taking it to the next level and doing some more advanced things. And we're going to be explaining how it all works. So let's just delete this test for now. Cool. So I'm going to stop my app and then I'm going to do npm run test and the create react app sets all this up for us. Um, we already have jest and this test script there. So we can see we had one test and it passed and using this test script it actually watches for changes in our tests. So if I for example change this to false the test is going to run again and it's going to see here that it failed obviously because it expected uh, false and it received true. So let's change that back. Cool. So as well as the packages that come by default with Create React App, we need to install two more things. So the two things we need is this testing library React and I see we might actually already have it, uh, testing library React, but it's a dev dependency so let's just move it there. And we also want this React test renderer that we're going to be using. So let's just install them and save them. Cool. And let's start the test script again. And now let's create an actual test for our component. So we need to import three things from the test and library React. So let's import render, screen, and cleanup. 
and these are all coming from at testing library react so we can do that let's make this even smaller cool so we're importing these things from testing library react um, and now our test is going to use those but our test needs to render the component that we just created so we also need to import that and because we're inside the test directory we need to go back one and then import to do so now we have everything we need to write our first test so let's just call this should render to do component and what we're going to do here is we're going to use the render function that we imported here and we're just going to pass in the component that we created so this to do component and this is actually going to render the, uh, the component for us and now we're able to retrieve it so we can say const to do element equals screen dot get by test id and this is something that we're going to need to change in our component actually so we can use screen and we can use that to retrieve a component from the tree using its test id and right now it doesn't have a test id but let's finish this um, test out just so we can see it fails and then we can make a pass so let's give it a test id of to do one okay so now that we're doing this we want to now make some assertions on on this so we've acted we've set up we've acted and now we want to make some assertions on this so let's use expect and we can say to do element dot to be in the document and this is going to assert that it's in the document so this is actually going to fail now because as we know we don't have anything with this test id in the document so let's go back here and we're going to give this div a data test id of to do one so if i save that now it's still failing and that's because um, we used the wrong method here so this should just be get by test ID because we're assuming that there's only one there so now it's passing we can see it's retrieving this component and it's it's able to verify that it's there so we're able to do some more advanced things with this now so we can use expect to do element and we can use something like to have text content and we can verify that the test content we want is there so if we put high and save we can see that this is actually going to fail because uh, we actually have hello world so we can change that cool so this is a, a simple test testing a simple component but now we're going to make our component a little bit more advanced and we're going to give it some props so going back to the actual component what do we actually want this to do so we want it to render a to-do item and we want the user to know whether the to-do item is completed or not so to do that first of all we're going to need to pass something in as props and that's a to-do and going back to app.js we're now going to define what a to-do looks like so we're going to say const to-dos we're going to create a list of them and each of them is going to have an id we give the first one an id of one they're going to have a title we we'll just say wash dishes and they're going to have a boolean whether it's completed or not and let's say that this one isn't complete let's create another one let's give it an id of two and this one is going to be completed and this is just going to be make dinner okay so now that we have some to-do items we want to use those to-do items uh, as parameters for this to-do component so we're going to open a block here and inside here we're going to map through our to-dos so as we're mapping through we want to return a to-do for each of those and it's going to take a parameter of an actual to-do which is the to-do 
that we're currently on. So this is going to map through the whole array and for each one we're going to return a to-do component. So now we're able to remove this and save and we need to run our app again. Let's clean this up a little bit. And now we can see, because we have two to-do items, it's rendering hello world twice. So that's that's what we want. But now inside the actual component, instead of rendering hello world, we want to render the to-do item itself. So let's grab the things that we need from the to-do. So we know it has an ID, we know it has a title, and it has a completed. And these are coming from to-do. So first of all, let's just use the title to see that it works. So now instead of rendering hello world, we can see it's rendering the title of each to-do item. So this is a, a great start to begin with. So the one thing we're not doing very well here um, is showing whether the to-do is finished or not. So let's do that. First of all, let's extract something here. So we're gonna say that, first of all, it's gonna be inside a h1 tag and inside the h1 tag is going to be the title. And now we want to check if it's completed. So let's say const text equals, we're going to use a ternary operator. So if it's completed, we want to use a strike tag um, to basically strike out uh, the to-do. So inside here, we're going to put the h1 strike. And if it isn't completed, um, then we're just going to use the original h1 uh, without any strike around it. So after that uh, we want to return what we actually have found and that is the text. So we're going to return the text. So we can see now that looks nice. Um, we also want this test ID to use the test, to use the ID of the, of the to-do item uh, because these should be unique. So let's put this inside here and let's just say it's to do and then we're going to pass in the ID. Cool. So this now functionally does exactly what we want it to do. But now we want to write some tests um, to verify that it works as expected. Because then if we went and refactored this code, we still want the test to pass. We still want the behavior to be the same. Okay, so let's stop our app and let's go back and run our test. So we only had one test before and it's probably actually going to fail now because it's no longer returning um, a component that has text hello world. So we can see we're, we're getting some unexpected things here. So um, let's create our to-do item first of all. So it's going to have an ID of one and let's, we can actually just copy this from here. Let's use this. Okay. And we can actually close our browser now because we know what it looks like. We know it's it's not gonna change. Um, we're just gonna be writing tests now to verify that it's working as expected. So closing that now, we have a bit more room. So now we have this to-do item. And as we did before, we want to pass it in as a prop to our to-do component. So now let's see what part of this is failing because we should still be able to get this um, to do because we still have the test ID uh, of to do dash and the ID. Um, so it should be in the document, but what we're expecting to fail here is the text content, which it is. We can see um, we're expecting the text uh, to be hello world, but it's actually wash dishes, which is actually what we want. So let's change that. And as we can see, this to-do item isn't completed yet. So let's uh, rename this to should render non-completed to-do. And now things are getting a little bit easier because we can actually just copy this test and paste it. And let's rename it should render completed to-do. And we want completed to be true now. And let's just change this as well, although it doesn't really need to be um, changed. We can say wash car. 
So we still have an ID of one. Um, let's give it an ID of two instead, just to show it's still working. Um, completed is true. We're rendering that and we want to do dash two. And if we save now, uh, this should still fail because we have this, um, this is incorrect. This should be wash care. Cool. So just to mention as well, we're rendering all these items. Um, what we should actually be doing is using this cleanup method after each test to clean up uh, everything, to clean up the render. So let's use after each. So this is gonna run after each test uh, here. So after each test, we want to run cleanup. And this is just gonna make sure that everything is clean and every test is starting from the same starting point and there's nothing existing there already. So our two tests are passing and that's great, but we aren't yet testing whether the component is completed or not, whether the to-do is completed or not. So let's try to do that now. How could we do that? So we have this to-do element and um, we're able to look at, look at some things there. So let's use expect to do element dot to, there should be a HTML to contain HTML. So we know that a completed to do uses this strike tag. So we're actually able to use that and verify that it has this strike tag like that. So the completed to do should have this strike tag. If we copy this line and paste it up here, we know that this to do shouldn't have this strike tag. So this, this test should actually fail now. And we can fix this by inverting this by saying dot not. So this is gonna say this to do element should not have this HTML and now it's passing. So that's great. Okay, so this is some of the, the basic things uh, that we can do to basically check all of these um, different attributes and elements of the component. But this is quite manual. Uh, we have to verify all this, but it's, it's also a great test. There's also another way that we can write these tests. So we can use a snapshot um, to verify that the component hasn't changed since the last time we ran the test. So to do that, we're going to import renderer from React test renderer. And this is the other library that we installed in the beginning. So we can use this renderer now. Let's write another test. And this is going to use snapshots. So let's say matches snapshot. Okay. So again, we're going to need to create our to do like this. And now we're going to create a tree um, of the component. So we're going to render the component like this, renderer.create. And it's gonna be doing something similar here. We're actually gonna render this component. Um, and then from this tree, we're able to convert to JSON. So if we just, for a second, console.log, what the tree looks like, we should be able to take a look. So we can see that this is actually actually the component tree. So the, the actual component itself is a div, it has some props, and it has some children. So the children inside here is gonna be like the child um, elements here. So it would be like strike and h1. So how can we use this snapshot? Um, so it's gonna create that. And then we're gonna say expect tree dot to match snapshot and this is where the magic happens because if we take a look here in our components directory we have a test directory we have our test and we have our actual component once I save this it's going to run the test again and we're going to see something quite interesting happen so it's going to run our test we can see it created this new directory called snapshots and it actually contains our tree like that so going back here now, 
into where the test ran, we can see that something happened. So it ran our three tests, and we can see it also wrote a snapshot. So it created a new snapshot from the test suite. And now if I run this test again, it's going to know that the snapshot already exists, so it's not going to create another one. And it's going to verify that this component still matches the snapshot which was created before. So if I was to go back here and do something different here, um, if I was to add to do dash to the h1 tag and save, we can see that our test is actually going to fail now. Um, so the first two tests still passed because our components still contain the text wash dishes and wash car. Um, but the last test about the snapshot failed. And we can see here that it actually shows the diff of what, what changed. So given that, um, this we might have actually wanted this behavior. We might have wanted um, the to-do to contain this extra text. So if we actually wanted that, we can update our snapshot. So here we can see inspector code changes or press U to update them. If we press U, it's going to update the snapshot that was here. And now the snapshot contains the new component tree. And every time we run our test again, it's going to test against the new snapshot. And like that, I can change it back. And if I press U again, we want to update the snapshot to what it was before. Now it's back to what it was. So these, these tests are quite finicky. Um, so if we change anything in our component the way it looks, uh, it's going to fail the test. But it is good just to, to verify what's actually being changed. So I, I do like snapshot testing, but I also think that you need these other tests, these other unit tests, um, to basically verify that some properties that are important to you are there. Um, although these snapshot tests are more fragile, I think they're also very valuable and you can use a mixture of both, um, probably works best. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.